Hello and welcome. This is the news on Enter International reaching you live in Abuja, Nigeria's capital. Remember, you can view this news on Vision TV 24 7 and all the various social media platforms as displayed on your screen. My name is Justin Bemui and Shegun Ajayi will be the sign language interpreter. First, let's look at the headlines. U.S. government donates laboratory supplies to Nigeria as Joe Biden vows to deepen the Philippines in the South China Sea. As Federal High Court sentences Idris Okune to six months behind bar, court grants bail to Gordon Emefile in an alleged money laundering trial. Plus, South Africa's electoral body appeals verdict granting Jacob Zuma leave to participate in the country's parliamentary election. Once again, thank you so much for joining us. Nigeria has taken delivery of laboratory supplies donated by the U.S. government. Ucho Gochiku reports that the gesture is part of the ongoing collaboration to assist the country in its emergency response to disease outbreaks. Nigeria, like many other countries, has been burdened with infectious diseases at several times, further straining the health system. In tackling these outbreaks, evidence shows collaboration is critical. The U.S. government's donation of biosafety containment equipment, personal protective equipment and other commodities to the Nigeria Center for Disease Control is in continuation of its mandate for expanding and developing partnership with Nigeria. Laboratory scientists play a vital role in quickly detecting and confirming cases, which is crucial for an effective disease response. The increased volume of laboratory work created by these simultaneous outbreaks creates a pressing need for additional resources. This donation I'm making today is definitely going to enhance our capabilities in uh, diagnosing, detecting, diagnosing diseases of interest and globally to enhance our capability to make uh, things happen in this country with respect to health security. This is expected to add muscle to the current administration's renewed hope agenda in the health sector. Uchi Uguchu, NTA News. And the United States is seeking to strengthen alliances in the Pacific amid rising tensions with China. President Joe Biden vowed that the U.S. will defend the Philippines from any attack in the South China Sea. Ajume Steven tells us more. President Biden's comments are coming amid regular skirmishes and rising tensions between Chinese and Philippine Coast Guard vessels in the disputed waterway. The U.S. and Philippines have had a mutual defense treaty in place since 1951. China has repeatedly blamed the U.S. for raising tensions in the region. Speaking at the start of the three-day talks at the White House with Japanese Prime Minister and Philippine President, Biden said, any attack on Philippine aircraft, vessels, or armed forces in the South China Sea would invoke their mutual defense treaty. President Marcos' visit to Washington comes several days after his country accused a Chinese vessel of highly dangerous maneuvers near the second Thomas Shoal, a disputed maritime region near the Spatly Islands. The incident is one of several in which Chinese ships have been accused of harassment in the area, which include firing water cannons and ramming Philippine ships. While the three leaders did not specify China by name, Mr. Marcos said they share an unwavering commitment to rules-based international order. China, on its part, has repeatedly dismissed criticism of its actions in the South China Sea and blamed the U.S. for flaming tensions in the Indo-Pacific. The triennial meeting comes one day after U.S. President and Japanese Prime Minister announced the draft of agreement between the U.S. and Japan, focused on strengthening defense ties in the face of a potential threat from China. Jumai Stephen, NTA News. 
The Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has thanked his Belarusian counterpart Sergei Alenik for his hospitality on behalf of the CIS Council for Foreign Ministers members in Minsk on Friday. Lavrov arrived in Minsk on Thursday to participate in the seventh meeting of the Foreign Ministers of Russia, Kazakhstan, uh, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan. Menistan and Uzbekistan. Russian Foreign Minister says the top diplomats are to discuss the implementation of agreements signed during the Russia Central Asia Summit in October 2022, as well as exchange views on international and regional issues. In turn, Sergei Alenik proposed to honor the memory of the victims of the March 22 Crocus City Hall attack near Moscow with a minute of silence saying that, apart from Russians, citizens of many of our countries are among the victims of this horrific crime. Terrorism and its international component affect innocent people, regardless of their nationality, ethnicity or religious beliefs. Late on March 22nd, unidentified individuals dressed in military fatigues Open fire in the Crocus City Hall, a 6,000 seat multi purpose concert hall where a Russian rock band was set to perform. A massive fire broke out in the building shortly after. Over 140 people were reported to have been killed, while several suspects were captured and remanded in custody until May 22 on charges of terrorism. Back in Africa, General Bruce, uh, Bruce Oligui Nguema, transitional president of Gabon, is in Abidjan on a two-day working visit to strengthen bilateral cooperation with Cote d'Ivoire. General Bruce Oligui Nguema was received by President Alassane Ouattara at the Abidjan Palace. The head of the transition in Gabon during the visit will meet with the Gabonese diaspora and also visit the National Center for Agricultural Research, CNRE, among other engagements. It will be recalled that the general had already met his counterpart last November during the Saudi Arabia-Africa summit in Riyadh. Now, Kenya's meteorological department warns that the country is set to experience very heavy rainfall and asked people to prepare for floods. Heavy rains have led to flooding in several parts of the country, causing destruction to houses and farmlands. A details with Jumei Stephen. Reports put the death toll from flooding in recent days at 11, with over 2,000 persons displaced. This resident of Homer Bay in the country's west says many people do not have a place to call home, no roof over their heads, and their farmlands. We have people who have been internally displaced who don't have a place to call home. No roof on top of their heads. Their farmlands have been submerged and we are also talking about high rates of wildlife animal conflict. Here we are talking about hippominas that are marauding within the community, scavenging for pasture because their grazing lands have been submerged. And this is really a threat to the community and causing a lot of insecurity. In Kiriyanga County, Flood water swept away roads, thus paralyzing transport services. People have no place to pass. Some houses have been demolished, rice fields destroyed, and some people cannot get to their homes. They have opted to put up elsewhere because of the rains. You cannot tell the difference between the road and a rice field. On Tuesday, 51 passengers were rescued after their bus was swept away by flood waters on a bridge in northern Kenya. Kenya's meteorological department had warned that the country would experience very high rainfall and advised people to prepare for the floods. Jumai Stephen, NTA News. When I move to South Africa, where the country's electoral commission says that it had appealed to the country's highest court to rule on whether ex-president Jacob Zuma can stand in general election in May. The commission said in a statement on Friday that it had lodged an urgent and direct appeal to the Constitutional Court to provide certainty. The Electoral Commission said Friday that there was substantial public interest in providing certainty on the proper interpretation of the constitutional article relating to candidacies of people who have been convicted. 
Reports say it is the latest twist in legal wrangling over the eligibility of the 81-year-old who is fronting Umkonto We Sizwe, MK, a new opposition party that has become a potential upsetter in the May 29 election. In a surprise verdict on Tuesday, the Electoral Court ruled that Zuma could stand, overturning a decision by the Electoral Commission to bar him over a contempt of court conviction. The Commission had excluded Zuma from the race at the end of last month, saying the Constitution barred anyone sentenced to more than 12 months imprisonment. Zuma was sentenced to 15 months in jail in June 2021 after refusing to testify to a panel investigating financial corruption and cronyism during his presidency. His lawyers argued the sentence did not disqualify him as it followed civil rather than criminal proceedings and had been shortened by a remission. Zuma was freed on medical parole just two months into his jail term. Now back in Nigeria, the Lagos State Special Offenses Court sitting in Ikeja has granted bail to the former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Gordon Emefile, who is standing trial on a 26-count charge. The presiding judge, Justice Rahman Oshodi, granted Emefile bail in the sum of 50 million naira with two sureties in like sum. Justice Oshodi equally held that these assurities must be gainfully employed and have three years of tax payment with the Lagos state government. The court averred that the sureties must show proper identification and they must be registered in the Lagos state bill management system. The court also granted bail to the second defendant, Henry Omoile, in the sum of one million naira with two sureties who must provide two years tax clearance. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission last Monday arraigned Godwin Emefili and one Henry Omoile before the court on a 26 count bordering on alleged abuse of office and irregular allocation of $4.5 billion and $2.8 billion naira. The two defendants pleaded not guilty to all the counts. And also the Federal High, High Court Lagos Division has sentenced Nigerian cross-dresser Idris Okune, popularly known as Bob Risky, to six-month imprisonment without option of fine for abusing and mutilating the Naira. Justice Abimbola Awoboro gave the order in Lagos having convicted the defendant. The conviction of Idris Okunye is on the matter filed by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission leading his arraignment on April 5, 2024, bordering on abuse of the Naira. The convict pleaded guilty to all the, count, all the counts during his arraignment. Justice Awogoro asked about his gender and replied that he was a man. The court also ruled that his jail term commences on the 24th of March 2024, when he was arrested. The crossdresser had been in the custody of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, since his arrest over abuse of the Naira. Bob Risky was arrested by the EFCC for abusing the local currency and for mutilating the Naira notes, where he spread 400,000 Naira at a movie premiere in Lagos. He had earlier pleaded guilty to a four-count charge of Naira abuse brought against him by the EFCC in Lagos, Diana Ajale, NTA News. Now let's take a break. The news will continue shortly after this break. Do stay with us. Senate President Goswil Akbabu is seeking his people's continuous collaboration with the federal government for the effective delivery of dividends of democracy. Now, this was while briefing his constituents on his journey so far as the Senate President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Evelyn Badoekbo reports. Senate President Gotswil Akpabiu appreciates his constituents for standing by him and President Bola Ahmed Tinobu during and after the elections, emphasizing that as Senate President, he will bring Sokol to the state in collaboration with the President and the state governor. President. Bola Maximibu decided to assist all lawmakers at the federal level to touch the people at home. People are complaining there is no food, and therefore they need to provide food. I want to assure you 
that I will assist you to make sure you are not hungry. He assured the people of Akwaibom Northwest Senatorial District of his commitments to their welfare with the collaboration of the governor. As the senator is doing his own, the governor should also be doing his own. That way, the state will be better. I, I think it is time that we, we have finished with politics of election now. We are now doing governance. And the governor of the state must touch you. High points of the event was the distribution of over 10,000 bags of rice and all the essentials for his constituents in all the wards. Evelyn Badu Epu, and A News. Now, owing to the importance of road infrastructure to alleviating poverty and improvement of quality of lives of citizens, Niger State Government has so far embarked on the construction of 1,000 kilometers road projects spread across the state. The State Governor Mohamed Umaru Bago, during the groundbreaking ceremony of 118 kilometers road in Kontagora, says the effort is geared towards the realization of his urban renewal policy. Hussein Musa reports. Of the 1,000 kilometers road project embarked upon by the Niger State government, spread across the three geopolitical zones of the state, 400 kilometers are federal roads. The 118 kilometer road project in Kontogura covers reconstruction of the 90 kilometer Kontogura regional road, construction of 19.4 km western bypass and 8.7 eastern bypass ring roads all in Kontogura axis. The projects which have been awarded to different contractors after careful selection will be closely monitored to deliver according to specifications. Similar events have also been flagged off across the three senatorial districts of the state. Before we conceive this project we already got funded for it. We are not expecting unnecessary variation. So what we have decided to do, we cannot let our people suffer in the name of waiting for federal government intervention. So as a state and with the collaboration of the Prime Minister of Works and also the presidency, Mr. President has already given us a go ahead with these jobs. So with all these uh, efforts, we are sure that uh, we are going to bring our sukkah to our people. Niger State being an agrarian community, the urban renewal efforts of the Governor Mohamed Umarubago led administration when it comes to fruition will no doubt open up the hinterlands and promote social economic activities in the state through agriculture. Emena Hussein Musa, NTA News. Now the Commander Nigerian Navy ship Soro Commodore Sunday Lakan has again warned criminal elements around his operational territory to desist from illegal businesses as the command will not only clamp down on them but will ensure that they face the full weight of the law. The commander handed down this warning while parading suspects arrested with truckloads of 12,000 litres of illegally refined petroleum products before journalists at NNS Soro Base in Yenugua. Ibilimi Zitimiola was there and now reports. The Nigerian Navy ship Anana Soro, upon discreet intelligence, laid ambush around the Bisini community in Yenagua local government area of Bioso State and arrested two suspects on a master car with illegally refined products loaded as well as a truck loaded with 12,000 liters of AGO that was siphoned from Ajib Oil Well located at Bisini and were taking the products to another illegally refined site. The commander, Anana Soro, Commodore Sunday Lacan, who resumed about three months ago, said they will not rest until they eliminate the activities of illegal bunkery in the Niger Delta region. The commander also urges those indulging in illegal bunkery to desist from such acts or risk prosecution. Their activities is causing a lot to the country, to economy. We are losing a lot. This is my candid advice to whosoever that is perpetrating this crime to stop if not the long arm of the law will come all after them i show you that from a uh, by a lot maga for jk4 products kara to receive from jk4 so along the way as i'm coming carry the blue to come carry the coin biama so patrol van can arrest me that is why they call me come here 
although two suspects are still under investigation, having been handed over to relevant prosecuting authority. The commander, NNSRA, say the Navy will sustain aggressive surveillance to reduce illegal bunker activities in the region. Ebinimi Zitimiola, NTA News. In another development, the Nigerian Navy has apprehended four individuals for stealing metallurgical coke stored by a Jalkota Steel Company Limited as coal in Kogi State. Metallurgical coke serves as a power source for heavy duty equipment. Jonathan Omajali reports that the suspects are between the ages of 15 and 22. A Jalkota Steel Company Limited specializing in the sourcing and production of iron ore for the manufacturing of various metallic materials, particularly for automobile needs, has recently faced a setback. Years ago, a quantity of its product intended as stock for the company was stored along the jetty route of the industry for convenient access. However, criminals managed to breach the facility's security gaining entry from the riverside and absconding with over 300 bags of metallurgical cook. Commodore Mosi Zekpele, the commander of Nigerian Navy Ship Lugard, upon apprehending the culprits and handing them over to the Nigerian police, urged the management of Ajakuta Steel Company Limited to reevaluate its security framework in anticipation of the revitalization initiatives beheaded by the administration of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. On the part of Nigerian Navy ship Lugard, we shall not rest on our oars in curbing activities of miscreants along the waterways of Kogi State. You can see that they assess this place through the waterways. Kogi State government lauded the collaborative efforts of joint security agents, which led to the apprehension of these criminals. This effort we are seeing today, we believe, is going to serve as deterrent to criminals and will be criminals who want to test the resolve of the government of Kogi State to perpetuate any act of criminality within the territory of Kogi State. Concerted efforts are underway to revive Ajokuta Steel Company Limited, especially with the appointment of Shaibu Audu, an indigent of Kogi State, as the Minister of Steel by the administration. Jonathan Omajali, NTA News. And next on our lineup is Sports Update with Gift George as our guide. After qualifying for the Olympic Games in Paris after 16 years, the Nigerian Football Federation has concluded plans to organize two friendly matches for the Super Falcons to ensure they are adequately prepared for the Olympic Games. This is heading to the call by the Super Falcons head coach Randy Waldrum, who advised the football body on the need for the international friendlies to ensure the team is well prepared ahead of the Games in France. The Super Falcons have been drawn in a group alongside Brazil, Japan and Spain. In the English Premier League, Premier League clubs have unanimously agreed to the use of the semi-automated offside technology from next season. The 